Welcome everybody. Uh, this is the Lunch Learn event. It's the first one of American Qualified, which is a blog that's right on, which is pretty cool. Um, we do have food coming. We're going to get started, and then when we get to like the meat of the topic, we'll, we'll like, pause, eat, come back, and then we can resume. So I hope you guys, my goal for this workshop is that you leave here with a few terms of what to go Google or search after this. This is SEO 101. If you do have heavier questions about machine learning or anything, what we'll questions at the end? So, hello everybody. My name is Tom McGinnis. I am a marketer at Security. I am also an MBA student, and as I stated already, I'm blogging under American Qualified. I had a personal blog going before, but I started to hit some friction moments, but then I had a win, and then that was kind of the indicator that I should actually rebrand and go a different route with the blog. So here we are, American Qualified. Uh, how can I sum up the last few years? I like the analogy of, I've worked with a lot of startups and there's been a lot of failures along the way. And I wind up putting those into like, it's almost like you dig a hole. And then with each failure, it's almost like it fills the hole. <laughs> and then eventually you crawl out of the hole. So that's, Kind of where I've arrived today, and now people people pay me to help them uh, grow their businesses. So this is today's agenda. We're going to just cover three things, Google My Business, Website SEO, and Google Search Console. On the surface, SEO seems really simple. You can go to YouTube, look it up, find a tutorial, and just walk through it. Uh, but when you actually get into doing the work, it's a bit complex. Uh, I include this for a little sample analysis. There's a Google plugin you can use called Keywords Everywhere. Uh, it's nowhere else in this, so if there's a time to write it down, it's now. It will tell you how much search volume a term is getting and how much competition there is around it. And it will do this on all your Google pages, like volume 50 per month. If you're going to run ads, it's probably going to cost you six bucks. Competition 24 relatively off. Uh, this is for videography Halifax. This is the stuff that we want to rank for. This is our goal of how do you get here. Uh, and then I clicked on more places. And I noticed down here, Applehead Studio Photography. They have 39 reviews, rated five star. It seems like they've done a lot of stuff, but yet they're still only ranking six with 39 reviews. Uh, not that great. And obviously, probably not the result they want. The other thing I would point out is that here we're searching for a videographer. They have photography. So I decided I'd dive in and try to figure out how I could do SEO here locally. Uh, so I went to Digital Marketing in Nova Scotia, targeted that keyword, and I guess consulting, digital marketing, and advertising. This took me about a month to hit. Um, I have a full time job. If anything, this told me that Nova Scotians aren't really taking advantage of local SEO opportunities, especially paper renders. So that's something that I hope you take away from this is that this is achievable. You can leave here today and go spend a week doing this, and you'll see some lifts. So starting off, we have Google My Business. So what is Google My Business? It's a web app that you can use and it manages your listing on Google. Google will come along and try to set this up for you if you don't do it, but it, it makes a huge difference if you get ahead of the ball, get in there and do it yourself. Things that you can include are your business name, reviews, posts, locations, contact information, product services. It's pretty basic. And then the setup, so you literally go search Google My Business. You start now, you create an account, and then you're in. This is what the inside of it looks like. So it'll ask you for information when you're updating it, like what's the name of your business? What do you do? Where do you serve? Um, and then you also have, like, you can post on it just like you would in Facebook or anything like that. The reason why a company would post, if I'm a bakery and I have rolls that are about to turn or whatever, if I say, yo, discount, uh, come visit your store, when people search for that, or search bakery in your area, it'll show up. This is food. There you go. Cool. 
Come on in. Hi. Hi. This is actually, we can, we can press time here if we want. So keep going, Holly. Keep going. Okay. So when using Google My Business, the three biggest things that I would advise you guys look for as like beginner one-on-one kind of lessons to take away is be descriptive with your name. So a lot of businesses will just throw McGinnis Consulting or whatever your business might be. Write in what you do. And this is also helps you in business planning and business strategies. You don't want to say McGinnis Consulting, everything company. We do like painting, SEO, advertising, and everything. Like choose the things that you're going to do. And you got to stick to that if you're going to play online. Like if there's some app companies in here and stuff. Um, that's is you got to pick a niche. You got to pick like a, a segment to focus on, and that that will help you get ahead. Verify when you log into uh, Google My Business, there will be a little notification, a little exclamation symbol, and say you are not verified. Um, a lot of businesses say, "Yeah, okay, whatever," and they just forget, or they just don't do it. You will literally receive a piece of mail. You click like. Verify my business, and they want to make sure these are legitimate businesses. And Google can even like, like if we there's companies over overseas that could spin up a hundred Google My Businesses in like a day. So if you get the card, it's a way to legitimize your business and to show that you are real. Uh, thank you, Holly, for receiving mail for me when Mom came. I did receive that. <laughs> Uh, the other thing too is add areas, service areas. So what I do not do is just put Canada. Again, this is just general life advice. Be thorough in what you do. Make sure that you've updated every box. Look for all the places that you could add in more information. So I got really specific with the areas I target right down to the neighborhoods and locations. Uh, and you can build that up. And that way, if you get people, I mean, obviously, the local SEO stuff. If you are a bakery, again, and someone searches up bakery Halifax, then you're going to show up instead of bakery Canada. So that's it for Google My Business. The, okay, the food's coming. Um, website SEO. What is SEO? Search engine optimization. Adjusting your web pages to rank higher on search engines. This would be things like page styles and backlinks to your site. And I have a few experiments I'm going to show you with what I've done to play around with this and to figure it out. Um, there's people online, you'll, you'll find them on Google, uh, on YouTube. They'll say, oh, the, like, the trick, the thing that you're missing on your SEO pages is all tags on your images. Or the thing that you're missing is the meta description. You have to use this and this method. Um, even the URL, like they just go into these really, really crazy details. So I kind of dug in, I'll show you that later, uh, takeaway lessons from internal SEO. Um, so I dug in to figure out an experiment on SEO. So the first thing I did was I played around with the page title. So the page title is located in the tab. Uh, so if you hover over it and you just let your mouse sit there, Marketing quality, digital marketing, advertising analytics. It also matches to Google My Business. So. Ready to take off with digital marketing. Uh, simple header and subscribe marketing qualified. You have your call to action. The things I'm hitting off on this is showing that there's a lot of marketing related words, a lot of marketing related things. We won't get into machine learning, but that all plays into when a robot is trying to figure out what your website is about. For mine, it's pretty easy to tell Google this is a marketing website. Um, backlinking. Out of everything I've done, backlinking has been the thing that gave me the most lift. Um, a lot of search results that are on Google, they're there and they might only have like six or seven links pointing to them. Uh, in my experience with it, if you can earn backlinks, that's a way to win the SEO battle. And I'll show you this in a minute. Okay, this is the experiment. Innovacore started in 1994. Links to the website, there are many. 
legitimacy. Hi. Domain authority, which is basically a way of saying how legitimate is this business in the eyes of Google, is 44. My own site. I started this, it was March 14, 2019. Middle of none. Um, low legitimacy, domain authority one. So how does a new website build their SEO and improve themselves in the eyes of Google? So the first thing I did was I said, okay, well, I'm gonna try this content approach because everybody's saying content marketing, you gotta be blogging, you gotta be doing all this stuff. Uh, I produced content, I posted it online, I promoted it, used some ads, got the content flowing. 859 likes uh, across the content that I produced, I was pretty happy with that. But still, domain authority was one. So I thought, okay, well maybe, you know, there's a lot of evidence out there showing that you need to be active on social media and you have to have a following, et cetera. So, again, I'll go back to Facebook and start aggressively promoting my page, um, get 5,000 likes, really build up the community, and that way when I serve the content to the audience, the more people would come in. But still, domain authority was one. Now this comes back on King. I call up Holly, and I say, that old blog post I wrote for you last summer when we did the, I think it was today last year. It was, it was a year ago yeah, today. Yeah, Facebook reminded me. Um, I did a workshop on email marketing. I said, that old blog post I wrote, can you go change the links on those, update it to my new site? Because this used to point to my old blog. Um, I didn't hover over it, but sometimes there's like the URL be down there. So I had Holly update those, and she did. Thank you. And it went up. So after that happened, I went to Google. I basically said, hey, I've updated my website. Can you please go crawl it again? And they go through, and that was that was the result of backlinking. So out of everything, that was a manual backlink. Uh, if there's one thing you can do, it's backlinking. But don't use Fiverr. I've <laughs> gone down that road before. Uh, you get burned. So Fiverr, if you're not familiar, you can find people in Indonesia and other countries around the world. You can give them like five bucks, ten bucks to go get backlinks to your website, and they'll come back and they'll say we've linked five hundred links to your website. But a lot of those don't turn out to be legit. Um, the way that they do it, Google is aware that, that whole industry exists and they do things to counter. Um, manual backlinking is the best way by far I've seen. It's also the one that requires the most amount of work. So I don't have an answer for how do you do this on scale, but my best bet would be create a list, uh, whether that's an Excel sheet, whatever, try to get a thousand companies or just start like you can get a data person to just go through and start enriching, like somebody who you usually get for a lead enrichment, get them to just start, hey, I want a list of every marketing blog or whatever your website's about. Create content for them. Hey, here you go. Wrote this piece. We're publishing and asking for links back to your site. It's pretty manual. Um, the businesses I've seen that are doing it, like the, the people in the marketing space, uh, there's a video about New York SEO. The top result for New York SEO only had about seven links pointing to it. So like, you can get seven. If you have a list of a thousand, you hit a thousand people, you will get seven. Uh, and it might not even take that long. You might only tackle like 10 and you might get all 10. But it's a quick way to build the legitimacy of your website. Can I ask a quick question, sorry? Sure. The, um, when you kept on going back to check how your ranking was, yeah. was that just in Google or was was that a those separate sites that analyze your it's a separate site. It's a uh, Moz. Which one? Moz. Moz. M A S. M O Z. Um, yeah. So they have they invented the domain authority. Uh, Red Michigan. Yeah. It's uh, basically a way that shows you like, here's how legitimate your site is. It uses it's Google doesn't publicly display what their algorithm is, but Moz's uh, domain authority is the best guess of what it is. Moz.com. Yeah. And I can show you how I did the, uh, that's something I'll get into, is how I manually go in and request Google come from my site so I could actually make sure that every time I was changing something, it was legit. Colin, maybe we'll take a quick break for the Yeah, let's do that. Uh, All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> 
I would eat a version of that. I would have a cauliflower sauce as it goes. Amy! We're going to run through So the reason that I'm doing it is just putting really vodka together. Because we're going to have more energy. Can I call it Anthony? Yeah. 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 <laughs> So the three things you want to cover, uh, Google My Business, we want to website SEO, and then the last one that I want to tell you about, which is often forgotten about and often not used, is Google Search Console. What is Google Search Console? It's a web tool used to collect deeper insights on how people are actually searching for your business on Google. So in the world of advertising, we have impressions, we have clicks, we have all these things. So the idea is that a reach would be the amount of people an advertisement reaches. The amount of people who actually stop scrolling and look at that, that counts as an impression. So Google tracks the same sort of approach to advertising as they do to your Google listings. So you can actually go in and see Actually, I have a picture of it. I'll show you that. Um, this is how to set up the so Google Search Console. Start now. Um, you can actually start to see here's how many clicks, here's how many impressions. So you can you can see what words even the searches that people are using to find your business. Um, and the big thing with I'd say the most maybe the most important thing as like an SEO person that Google Search Console can do for you is that we're updating our websites all the time. Uh, especially if you're in the digital world, uh, you're just always updating. You think of, like, think of Steve Benny on, like they're always, they update it every day, here are the conditions, here are the hills that are open, et cetera. Um, for them, they would want their information listed on Google that's accurate. So if there's special hours or anything like that, a lot of that can be actually managed in Google My Business. But if people, change their site and they want to update it. So let's say you just went through a rebrand and you would, and you want everything that you had about your old website carrying over, um, but you have stuck with the same URL, you just changed the language and the direction. So if before it was marketing and now it's digital marketing and you want to reflect that change to Google, you can go in there and you can say, come crawl my website. Uh, it's not really a button that says that, it should say that to be easier, but um, here's like the words you can see. What is a CRM? These are just some impressions. I didn't get any clips on those, but they're there. Um, there's a whole post on how to do this. I don't know if I have a screenshot of it. Let me say. Let me check. Um, here, I'll just pull it up. Or not. Anyway, you can. I have a blog post that walks through how you actually submit your URL to Google. Oops, you don't have access to this property. Okay. I'll be on the wrong account here. This website is down. This is a safe one. Okay. Um, so basically, what you would do is you would just take like a URL, uh, like let's say, let's do security.com. URL is not property. Okay. I don't want to reveal anybody's data that I shouldn't. Um, 
So if I were to go to marketingqualified.com, retrieving data, this will tell you whether or not the URL is actually listed and in a directory on Google. The URL is not Google. That's HTTP. I'm HTTPS. So also check for that when you're doing these searches. Um, so here's a blog post that I wrote. Google. Good. So URL is on Google. If it is not on Google, or if it is changed, page change, request index. You click that, Google's going to come in. They're going to distribute their box. Again, you don't have to do it. You can leave it, and Google will eventually come closer. But if you raise your hand and say, hey, can Google prioritize it, they'll come and search your website and index it sooner. Why that's important is because if you have a blog post or if you like news articles or anything, and it says release, but if you search something happened, it says two hours ago, stuff like that. That's why you would want to take a URL while it's fresh, new, and relevant, and submit it on Google. We don't have much more to go. So those are the terms that people are searching. You, you can see what people are actually clicking on, and then you can go in and optimize your titles and change around images, or you might even rework an entire piece of content to make it better. On my blog, if you go under blog, Grow your blog. Um, this is one of the articles that's listed in there. You can get the detailed walkthrough on how to do that. There's screenshots, there's arrows, there's everything that you need in there. So that's SEO 101. I really want to hop to the questions section that I'm going to summarize here, but the questions section is where I think you guys will get a lot of value from. So we can get into like the specifics just, just out there. Um, so use Google My Business, be specific, verify your business. Website SEO. Make sure your page titles are clear. Like you could you could call your page about, or you could call in the example I had earlier um, about security, information security compliance software. So you can be more descriptive in your titles. The website URL. Make sure you don't get like page ID question mark equals underscore four two one. Um, make sure that they're clear. Page headers. I mean stick. It's all pretty straightforward. Like if your about page should be your about page, it should not throw a giant buy now button at the bottom. Um, and even like some pages, like if there's a call to action that makes sense for the about page, it's probably go visit the blog. It's probably not going to be, you know, create an account or anything like that. Like something that's more bottom of funnel. Uh, and search console, you can go through and view what people are actually searching for. The end result is if you're an app company, Google will tend to categorize your website like this. So when people search your company, this is Envision, you get the nice layout of the different pages. And if you're a local business with an actual address, then, and not an actual business, I guess apps are businesses too, but um, <laughs> like if you have like a shop or a storefront or things like that, you'll show up like that. Thank you for your time. This is Martin Qualified's first event. I think there's a feedback form. No feedback forms. Mm -hmm. Message the face or the uh, our Facebook page um, and tell us what kind of events you want to see. We want to do more events. We want to keep in contact. And feedback we appreciate it. And we can jump into questions. If I'm creating here on Google My Business. Yeah. And I'm working out with my palms as my business, but I don't want people coming to my door. Yeah. What do you do to? You do make what I did. Uh, because I'm waiting <laughs> for my code. I'm waiting for my code, and then I need to know. Yeah. You know, I can't say exactly where. Yeah, I like, come come to ATM. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, yeah. So what I did was I found a co-working space for somewhere in town that I like for me. Specifically, yes. I do some work up here. This is listed as my business address. Um, so if there's like a place that you can put it, I also want it to be like ranking for things specific. So if I rank, if I put in like my home address, that one like it's in Glace Bay, and yes. then people are like, yeah, I just so I put it here for like I find a workspace or somewhere that you're comfortable with. Okay. Do you work on your business full time? 
No, I work full time in my business. Okay. Yeah, I would do that. Then. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Wow. So for um, the search console, I've tried to plug that in before, but then after you get your code or whatever, after you do that first step, it says uh, copy the text txt. I'm guessing the text record below into the DNS configuration. I don't know what that means, okay. and I'm on Squarespace, so it might like that. I always get stuck. Did there. you where do you have like a your own custom URL? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do do you use GoDaddy or? Google or anything like that to get that domain? Uh, we, did, we did everything through Squarespace. Mm -hmm. Okay. There might be, I'm not sure with Squarespace, but there might be a settings thing. But from, like, if I get my, do my domain name from uh, GoDaddy or from yeah. Google, you can go in and then configure files associated with that. Uh, there's usually a how to guide on how to do it. Um, I've never tried it on Squarespace, so I Google, like, how do you do that? So if you went on to Squarespace and I just bought your URL from them? I'm pretty sure we did. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I always get stuck at that point because I don't know what DNS configuration means. Yeah. And then, yeah. I don't know my login to go there. You're going to show you. But, um, yeah. Okay. Message me after. And I, can I, and I have a second question. Sure. So when we first opened... Um, when we registered everything, we used like our, our personal Gmail account and we started our work kind of listing. And so we've been posting and we do the pictures and we do as much as we can to try and get organic SEO. And then Google suggested we do the business, like a, the business one as, as opposed to. So I started doing that. Like Google My Business? Yeah, Google yeah. My Business. So now we have like Google My Business, but we have all of the stuff that we invested with under our Gmail name. And so I'm worried that if I abandon that, I'm going to lose everything and start back from scratch with Google My Business, right? Like, I, I've put in the information, but then yeah. where do I put my effort? Because if I, I don't want to do both because it's double tagging something or I don't know, but do I leave that and start all over? Do I just, like, what do I do? Um, so for Google My Business stuff, um, I mean, I tend to just include it in my mix of promotional things. Like, when I release new blog posts, I go to Facebook, I might update the footer in my email address. Um, I'll promote it on Instagram or whatever. I also go into Google My Business, click post, and then post it and say, hey, we have a new piece of content. Um, and even a step further, I don't do this part when I'm about to suggest on social media, but I do it on Google My Business. Hey, we updated our services page, check it out. Or hey, we update this, and then you can include links. Um, just so that when people are searching for that thing, it's like, oh, there's like new information about this company here. Um, if that helps, like I would, I would include it in whatever mix of activities that you do. Like you know, I wouldn't worry about double linking and stuff. I think the more the more important thing is your consistency, and that's like I'm a numbers guy and I love that stuff. But I know <laughs> consistency and just doing things regularly will win against the Google strategy versus like one off. I'm not suggesting you do this, but if like one off efforts, I'm like, we're going to go really hard on this thing. And then you only do it for like two days and then you disappear for four months. Like just consistency will get you there. Cool. I can I ask another question? So when you're sure. suggesting about backlinking yep. and you're reaching out to your contacts to do a backlink, are you suggesting that they post that on their websites or is a social media link good enough? No, I would say on their websites. That's that's the hard. That's why it's hard. Like if it's social media, it's like, hey, can you like link to us, whatever. But like to actually get like a legitimate authority, like no corp that's been around for a long time, and to get them to point to your site. The other great one is press releases, which you're like Google knows which websites are news. So if like if you got a link in the Cape Breton Post, and I get. Does anybody in here work with Cape Breton Post before? <laughs> 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 um, no, like we did a webinar series in the past, and uh, I had to like tell them, hey, we actually need that to, to link to our site. They're like, oh, like, you know, the URL's there if they need to copy and paste. Like, no, like it needs to, it's for reasons not, it's not for the reader, unfortunately. It's like for Google. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Was it, 
was it over the top? But I've done workshops in the past, and the feedback has been, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been like optimizing and improving over time. Uh, I was told probably not a good idea to get into machine learning if you guys wanted to like tap into that a little bit. I'm more than happy to. And I'll take silence as a no, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> So if I want to learn more, um, can I? do you have anything on your website as far as like resources or anything that I can check out? Uh, I do. It's coming. Uh, I have my categories all laid out and picked. Uh, the content is, writing the content is difficult to come up. So like right now, you go to AmericanQualified.com. Thank you for this. Um, I like this question. So if you go on your blog, this is going to be filled out a lot more. So the three main categories, you can't really see it here, but industry specific advice, and that's something I'd like you guys to know too. If you're in a specific industry and you have questions or you want advice, we will write articles. I have me and one other person will write articles uh, for that specific industry. Marketing strategy and advice, this is probably where the majority of readers are going to spend their time, which is like, hey, I I don't need to know the other stuff. I just want to know what will get me more traffic right now. I want to know how to rank right now, and I want to know how to get more leads. Um, and then the last category is setting off your marketing operations. So if you're like completely new to marketing and you're trying to do it yourself, that's where people will go and it will be like, here's how you find your customer journey. Here's what to do with the customer journey. Yeah. So that's there. The resources are there. Um, there will be more. I didn't want to do a enter your email for every single one of them. Um, so if you subscribe, you just get everything. Let's see, I'll take on that. Yeah. So we can do one more and then we can just resume talking and then uh, eating. <laughs> What about like uh, Google AdWords, like actually spending money on AdWords? Does that yeah. improve your SEO or is it not effective at all? So this is a blog post that's coming out. Um, it's something that's really cool. There's actually like a triangle is the best way I can say. So like, <coughs> if you think of your purchase intent is on the y-axis and on the x-axis is like what platform you should use or like the depths, I guess it's apparent. Anyway, um, Facebook ads and everything work really well for top of funnel and stuff. Like, like events or like there's different, it depends on the industry you're in. But if you get into more technical stuff, like let's say security, right? We could be putting Facebook ads up there to get secure, et cetera. But as people start to move their way down through purchase intent, Google AdWords are really good. So if we, we right now, I think we started this on Friday or Thursday. Um, and if like you search the term like policy, creator for information security. Security will pop up, because those are people who are like late at stage funnel, so it's pretty good to include. For somebody who's just starting out uh, yeah. in a local business, do you have any tips on phrases or keywords that they should pay attention to in general for their particular business? I know it would vary from industry to industry, but mm -hmm. sitting here, I understand SEO, but if I was to start a business, I'm not quite sure what I would be looking for, right? Like, what are the best keywords? How can I focus on those? How can I find them? It's, I would use keyword, like, I would use a tool, like keywords everywhere that I mentioned, and see how much traffic is going to a specific term. Better yet, for locally here in Cape Breton, I think what's realistic that people are actually going to search. Um, and then if you can grab or gravitate around that. So, like, for me, it's digital marketing, it's advertising. And it's analytics. So I, I try to hover around those. For new business starting out, the more specific you can be, like, I don't want to throw shade to anybody because we're in a small community, but it should not have taken me as quick as it did to outrank local competitors and people, you know, frankly, doing this on a full time basis. Um, maybe they are taking a different approach. Maybe they've tried search in the past and it didn't work out for them. But for new business starting out, like the SEO game is really easy to win here. So it'd be like that, I'd be tackling that. Something technical I had 
puts Google all over the place. So when you start typing in phrases, you can start finishing for them. So you try different phrases and see what it's suggesting, and then you can come up with some interesting options. Yeah, that, I think that's how I landed that like digital marketing consultant Sydney, Nova Scotia, like it just NS showed up. So I didn't go for like I don't even know if I'm gonna show up in this area. Um, yeah. I hope that helps. The uh, and, and this stuff, like the keyword research things work really well on YouTube. Uh, we'll, we might have a different thing on that, but like I don't know if it's still ranked for this or not, but yeah, like in the previous life I was a paddleboard instructor and these like keywords, like this is the, the tool working right here. Um, basically I just found the words that were, that had volume on them and low, low competition and then just put them, tagged them on the video. And Can you explain what competition means in relation to these keywords? Sure, so competition is like an estimate of how difficult the keyword is to rank. So if you're gonna talk about just marketing in general, marketing is very competitive. There's like a lot of people, but if you're talking about marketing about pages, then it's less competitive. So a one is considered high competition and anything close to zero is something that's easy to go get. So anything below like 25 is good. Like you can, you can get that. Um, you just need to work for it. Oh, like the, the, I should include too. Just because a keyword is zero doesn't mean you're going to rank for it today. Like if you leave here and go use the next hour of work to bang out a page and rank for it, like it's not really how it works. Um, yeah. I think I know the answer. And this may be a dumb question. But CPC is that cost per click? It is cost per click. So that's just an estimate of what people are paying for cost per click. Um, there are ways to really reduce that in the information security space. We're seeing cost per clicks of ten to forty dollars. Um, we've been able to get like a three dollar cost per click. Um, there's some ways to do it. I'd look in if if you do this outside of here, um, exact phrase match. So that's when you tell Google, I don't want people searching for digital marketing. I want only the people searching for digital marketing, Nova Scotia. Um, that helps move things along. Cool. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Colin.